Hello, uh, I'm Jin Pan, and uh, you can find out my background by typing my names in Google. Uh, today, uh, today I'm going to talk about Poisson's, Poisson's ratio, and uh, it's a relatively simple concept. But sometimes people are slightly confused by, uh, you know, when you do a final M analysis, uh, you 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 need to input Young's modulus and Poisson ratio. And people can understand why you need to input Young's modulus, but why do you need to use Poisson ratio? What role does Poisson ratio play when you do your stress analysis? So has, I want to give this a, a simple explanation. And a Poisson ratio is, is, is simple. So I'm, I'm, uh, let me demonstrate Poisson ratio by a piece of rubber. So I'm holding a piece of rubber, and if I uh, pull it in the, in the vertical or axial direction, yeah, I pull it that way. And you see the material get become longer in the in the actual or vertical direction. And it shrink, yeah, it become smaller in the lateral direction. Yeah. So then the Poisson ratio is simply the lateral string, yeah. So you pull, so that's the lateral string, yeah, lateral string, divided by the actual string, the vertical string and put a minus sign there, so we want to pass on ratio come out as a positive value. So that's simple, simple thing. Now, why does it matter? And it matters when we think about a piece of material. So if we have a piece of material here, so I'm using, let me just get my pen. So I use a, a small piece of material. If you think uh, the material, if it's, you apply stresses in two directions, yeah? Let's say that's the situation we're considering. So there is a stress in x direction, and there is a stress in the in the y direction. And what I want to do is I want to calculate, you know, in this case, what is my strain, corresponding strength in the x direction and the y direction. If I just have one stress, yeah, if I don't have that, then I can just use Hooke's law. Yeah, the Hooke's law says strain is stress divided by Young's modulus. That's very simple. Yeah. But what if I have stress in two directions? And so what I can think of is I can decompose this problem. I can imagine that this is, this is yeah, case one plus case B. So in case one, I just have stress in the X direction. And in the second case, I have stress in the Y direction. So, so let's just sort of separate the two stresses. And let's think. So let's say we want to calculate strain in the x direction. So this is what I want to calculate. Yeah, I want to calculate strain in the x direction. So if I just look at one case here, yeah, one case here, case A, that's easy, it's just hooks law. Yeah? So in this particular case here, the strain in the x direction is simply stress divided by Young's modulus. It's very simple. Now what is the effect of that stress that stress, stress in the y direction, on the string in the in the horizontal direction. No, we just define, we have just defined the, the Poisson's ratio. So we just use the idea of Poisson's ratio. So stress in the y direction, stress in the y direction, divided by Young's modulus is string in the y direction. Yeah? And that string times Poisson's ratio gives me the lateral, lateral string. So we just superimpose these two on each other. So strain in the x direction is that minus minus that. Right? Simple super superposition. Now you can do the same thing for the second direction. Yeah, the same thing. So you, you do exactly the same thing as a string in the y direction and is first String in the y direction, stress divided by Young's modulus, that one, and minus Poisson ratio times string in the x direction. So this is a small extension of Hooke's law. Hooke's law is just that. Yeah, the first one. String is stress divided by Young's modulus. But if we have a stress in the other direction, we have a second term there. Now you might have a stress in the z direction. Yeah. And then you have another term, yeah. So you have a third term. I'm just 
for the simplicity, I'm just looking at a, a plain stress or plain strain. A uh, 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 plain stress, this is a plain stress condition, so I don't consider stress normal to my white bond. And so, this is a small extension of the Hooke's law, and this is called generalized Hooke's law. Yeah, again, it's, it's actually very simple. So, let's come back to that question, what is the effect of Poisson ratio on stresses, yeah? So, to look at that, I, I ask you to imagine a, a problem where I place I place this piece of material between two rigid constraints. So I sort of I'm putting that material between two boundaries. Yeah, it's not completely glued because what I'm saying is the material is constrained. It can it can slide, yeah, on the interface, but it, in a vertical direction it cannot move. Yeah, so the material cannot expand. Or shrink in that direction. Yeah? So that material, you know, as you apply load, you apply stress in the x direction, it cannot move at all in the vertical direction. Yeah? But it can shrink. This is my hypothetical uh, situation. Just let's think of that. Yeah? So in another way, the material is constrained. Yeah? That material is constrained in the y in the, in the, in the vertical direction. So what do we have? What we're saying is that we're saying you cannot have strain in the y direction. You can have the strain in the horizontal direction, but you cannot have strain in the vertical direction. So strain in the y direction is zero. Yeah? So we're saying this whole thing here, this whole thing here has to be zero. So we just copy that down. And if we set this as zero, we know how this is simple with the Young's modulus, Young's modulus there disappear. So we reach this conclusion that you just rearrange that. You have you are stress in the y direction is is Poisson ratio times stress in the x direction. What does that mean? It means if you apply a stress, yeah, you apply whatever stress you apply in that direction, if you if you try to pull the material in that way, the material cannot shrink in the y direction. So the material Want to shrink? Yeah, you apply the, you, you're pulling the material in this way. The material wants to shrink in that way, but it can't. It, it, it's like this piece of rubber. I want to pull it. I want to pull it. It wants to shrink, but it can't. Yeah, because it's bonded there. It can't shrink. So what happens is, because it can't shrink, it generates a stress. Yeah, even you just apply load in that way, you generate a tensile stress in the vertical direction as well. And that stress you generated is simply Poisson ratio times the stress in the x direction. Similarly, if you try to squeeze the material, you know, you want to push the material, and the material would like would like to span, expand, yeah, but it, it can't because it's it's between these two rigid walls. So try to expand, but you can't. So if you try to squeeze the material, the material try to expand, but it can't, and therefore it generates a compressive stress in the in the in this direction as well. So again, that compressive stress is going to be simply Poisson ratio times the stress there. So here you see when if the material is constrained, then Poisson ratio play a role. Yeah, you generate a stress. Uh, the the Poisson ratio varies from material to material. Uh, let me demonstrate the Poisson ratio. So here we have a rubber. So you can see that the Poisson ratio is quite large. The, the Poisson ratio of rubber is almost 0.5, so that, that's quite a large Poisson ratio. But here is a, a piece of uh, foam, yeah? So imagine, you know, look, if I squeeze the material, yeah, you can imagine the material doesn't really expand at all in, 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 the, in the lateral direction. So the Poisson ratio for this foam is nearly zero, yeah? So porous material is a very porous material. The Poisson ratio of this material is nearly, nearly zero. If Poisson ratio is zero, then, then there is no effect. So if Poisson ratio is zero, and then what you have is that will lead to uh, sigma y is simply zero. So there is no there is no stress, lateral stress in the other direction. Uh, but if let's say situation if a Poisson ratio generally for engineering material is about in out of 0.3 something, 
in less open stream, then we, you would have the stress in the y direction will be 0.3 sigma x. And then you put that, if you, if you plug that value in there, yeah, so if I plug that in there, yeah, so what you have is you are strain in the x direction is something like 0.91 divided by Young's modulus times stress in the x direction. Yeah? So what I'm saying is, look at that equation there. That equation there. What I'm saying is, if you are applying stress in the x direction and you constrain the material in the y direction, if the Poisson matrix is open three, you get a smaller strain. Yeah? Yeah, the strain in the horizontal direction will be smaller. And it's smaller by that amount. If the Poisson ratio is 0.3, and the, the strain will be smaller. And, and what you feel is that you feel, you know, you apply the same stress. In one case, this is free. Yeah, material not constrained, you pull it. But if, if you somehow constrain the y direction, you don't let the material to shrink in the y direction, and you close your eye, you feel the material is stiff. <laughs> It's like a more, it's stiffer, it's, it's harder to make it change its, you know, change its length. Yeah? And that, that is stiffer, that's, it changes by this amount. Right? So what, I, what I'm trying here to summarize, what I'm trying to achieve is that you have that sense of what sort of role Poisson trees will play. Yeah? If the material is 100% constrained, you generate a stress which is proportional to Poisson's ratio in the, in the other direction. And then the material become stiffer. You feel that the material is become stiffer. So Poisson ratio play an important role when you do a stress analysis where where the material is constrained. And you often have that. Yeah, you might have assembly. You know, you assemble different material together. You often have that. And and or you have a situation where you have a chunky uh, 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 material where different part of the structure deform differently. And then Poisson ratio always play a Role. So that's very simple, and but I, I hope I, I make it even simpler for you. Thank you.